Here, by the way, I started to grow organic cabbages. And as you... Uh, uh, there's farmers and growers here. This part of the country, I hope. At least with the apples and cider, at least, I hope. And uh, one of the scourges of the uh, organic gardener is the cabbage white caterpillar. Okay? Now, the reason why I'm maligning it, ladies and gentlemen, so much is because of what I did a few seconds later. Please show the ghastly deed. Uh, a very painless injection of potassium cyanide, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's a good point at this stage to announce that um, I also do uh, children's parties and weddings. And, <laughs> and Andy will be taking bookings after the, after the presentation, or Martin down there, we'll see, we'll see. And, no, don't do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. I am an expert, okay. As my dad used to say, an ex is something that was, and a spurt is a drip under pressure. <laughs> and uh, so after this injection, you can see that the life force was put out. It was just like putting a, a hose on a, a bonfire. At light went out. There's, there's fallout from the creature, but that creature, I assure you, is quite dead. And that's the before, just to remind you, and the after. And the reason why I put healthy there is because it had a last meal of my organic cabbages. <laughs> uh, and they were beautiful, just done with a knob of butter. They were gorgeous, you know. So he died very ha I even put the butter on for him, you know. So. Anyway, thank you. And uh, here's some of that organic uh, material, the organic cabbage. Okay, beautiful. It's not a galaxy in some uh, thing taken from the Hubble telescopes taken in the early 1970s with this discovery. But you can do terrible things to uh, an organic piece of uh, material too, especially if you put it in a pressure cooker or stew it from hours and hours. How many of you of my generation remember school dinners? And you'd walk through the school gate and you could smell what you were going to be having for lunch because they've been cooking from about 7 o'clock in the morning. Don't overcook your vegetables, ladies and gentlemen, because it takes out the life force. And this vitality, we also proved, is transferred to a human subject or an animal subject who eats the organic material. Now, these aren't uh, some uh, supernova uh, uh, suns in a distant galaxy. They are organic oranges with the energy field around them in Curlian. Here we have an organic clove of garlic. And it was so energetic, ladies and gentlemen, with this effervescence of energy. It was even sending out, um, well, I didn't know what they were in those days, but almost orb-like structures right across the photography plate. Several, several centimetres. Now, I was approached when I was giving a presentation for... Um, uh, Association for Health for the New Age by Mark Corsons in the 1970s. Little did I know, in the audience, just like tonight, there could be a, a researchers and things, there was a young researcher called Glenn Ryan. And he was from the local hospital. And he said to me, I'm doing research on cancer cells and on some cancer subjects. Instead of doing all this organic photography, would you like to take uh, on a little research project with me on photographing people with cancer and also the cells growing in culture that I do. So without hesitation, you can imagine a uh, biology teacher, as I was at that time, giving the opportunity for this kind of frontline research. I you know, went and visited him at his laboratory and we didn't finish the first session of work till four o'clock in the morning. Uh, my ex-wife wondered where I was. Uh, in fact, she probably still wonders where I am. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> well, coming back to the picture, ladies and gentlemen, here, in a healthy person, this is fingertips, right? We've got lovely, organized packets of energy. Okay, my laser's failing a little bit. It can happen at my time of life. I'll switch lasers in a moment. And uh, here, though, the cancer subject, there's chaos. There's more energy, but it's not in organized packets. It's the life force gone rampant, ladies and gentlemen. Because, you know, cancer, uh, you know, obviously is associated with a very vigorous form of life, but it's not organized. It's, it's like a rebellion that's gone wrong. Um, 
Okay, next one. Um, but we weren't satisfied with just that. We were able to get hold of biopsy material from uh, this case, bre uh, breast, malignant breast tumour, and isolate from the centre of the tumour. And the surgeons at the hospital also used to take a, a what a safe surround in their um, uh, exorcism of the of the cancer site. Uh, so there's normal cells as well. And uh, Dr. Glenn Ryan checked under the microscope. This was normal tissue, exactly the same size, exactly the same thing. But the malignant tissue right at the centre of the tumour was so effervescent, effervescent. I could look at the top of it, and it was like looking down a miniature volcano as far as the energy was concerned of the cancer. When I looked down the tube of the normal. Uh, uh, cells, the normal tissue, they were quiet, doing the thing they all do, is just living their own li normal life force and working away in the background. The cancer once was so ex um, exuberant, it escaped the thick rim of the test tube there, the energy. And this is a uh, theory worked out, Glenn and myself, of how sometimes cancer can uh, transmit from cell to cell or tissue to tissue. It's called actually an old theory, mitogenic radiation if you ever want to look that up on the internet. Thank you. We also got whole tumours, ladies and gentlemen, and these are called TS sections, cross sections, okay? And this is a benign tumour, okay? And uh, it had a, an outside layer that was alive, that grew, but the centre part had necrotized, that means it had died off in the centre, and um, it gave off an energy field that was quite vigorous. But one thing about the, the tumour, if bit, uh, this tumour, if it broke off, bits of it, and circulated in the bloodstream, it wouldn't seed. It would not grow anymore anywhere else. If it carried on growing in someone's brain or in their liver or something, it could still kill you. Benign doesn't mean good in this case. But here, with this malignancy, it was a very um, strong-going uh, malignant carcinoma. And bits of this could break off, and you can see it's alive with energy all the way through. There's no black area or dead area. And some of the, these particular tumours and cells like uh, very low, high CO2 contents, tension, and, and uh, very low oxygen. And this is why in some in natural can can cancer therapies, they encourage the, uh, the, the movement of oxygen and hypooxygenated things through the body, especially the GI tract. Um, this I would like to thank um, uh, my uh, um, uh, uh, sort of uh, work, uh, workers in America who supplied me. Dr. Thelma Moss in particular did this, did this study in the 19, late 1970s uh, with rats. Okay, and here there was only the rats were photographed, but here we had uh, rats that had cancer in their bodies, not in their tails, but in their bodies, and here we had a healthy rat. And sometimes you could screen to see if uh, any rats, you could mix them up and you would always pick out the rats that had any cancer growing in their bodies, just as we saw with the human fingertips. So Glenn and I, Dr. Ryan and I, were thinking marvellous things that we would wanted to make this into a kind of a mass screening thing, coding photography for cancer. This is going back to the 1970s. Um, that particular project, I won't say by what and by who, was quashed because, and the excuse was the ethical committee, it was not drug-based, therefore it was unethical. Uh, the the uh, ethics are still the same today, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, so I was pretty dismayed by this, and I, I'd left teaching by then, and I was working uh, as much as I could in the hospital with the research work, and uh, um, after, you know, viewing my views, I was uh, frog-marched out, out the door one day of this hospital by security. And probably the best thing they ever did to me, throwing out the hospital, because I'd just be a glorified technician there now if they kept me. And I went on to say, I think I can do something better. And the reason I will tell you that is it's very pretentious for me to say that at the time. Because I'd watched the healing hands action on cancer cells of a wonderful healer. His name was Matthew Manning. Matthew Manning, back in the 1970s. And what he did uh, was not kill the cancer cells growing in culture. There was no animals involved, just cells growing. He stopped them from dividing by inhibiting a certain enzymes that were in, in, uh, very important for the mitosis, the division of the cells. And he stopped it dead. Didn't kill the cancer cells. Because he, he said to Glenn, he said, if I've got an energy that could kill cancer cells, someone or any healer, 
could have an energy that could kill normal cells, and we can't do that. 